All right, students, this video is going to go over section 3.1 and 3.2 in math 2. And we're getting into graphing parabolas. And your parent function, as we call it, is um, the x squared. Okay. Put it like that. Uh, Desmos doesn't like it there, but you can put it if you take that out. You can put it as a note here. And then it's like, so that's our parent function. Okay. What happens is we add stuff to it and it shifts the whole thing. Okay. And this gets confusing right away because you're like, well, which one's the original? Which one's the new one? Well, the parent function is always the more basic one. And then if you click on the little gear there, you can change the color of it. And now we can see, okay, the parent function is in black, the, the new one's in red. And so, oh, okay, what happened? We plus five. And we shifted everything up by five. Hmm, interesting. Instead of zero, zero, it went up to zero, five. Okay. The other way you can see that is if we make this a table and if we click edit, edit list, there's an option there to convert to table. And what we can see is it's the same table, but everything is shifted by five units. Okay. Everything's shifted by five units. Okay. If that's a little confusing, what I can do is I can highlight this. And when I click over here, paste it, and now you can clearly see everything got shifted by five units. Okay. All the numbers are shifted by five. Because all we did is we added five to our original equation. So the table on, on Desmos can save you a whole heck of a lot of time and is very, very useful in uh, graphing. Let's take that off, put this back. Now I want to show you a couple other things. Um, let's get back to where we were. Let's go undo, let's undo, undo, undo. There we go. Now again, we knew that was the parent function. How do you compare the two or how would you describe it in the book? Well, one thing is they use f of x and g of x. And as I mentioned, if you don't like those names, I just think of them as Frank and Gary. Two old friends you have, and uh, they're not as scary. Okay, or f I also call it fancy x. Okay, it's really you think of it as a function of x. That's the true proper thing. Um, but we're so used to seeing it as y equals that it's confusing when you see it as f of x. Okay, it's the same as y equals. It's just a new name. You see, the problem is if I called everything y equals and y equals, well then I say, oh, the y equation. Well, which one? The top y equation or the bottom y equation? Well. That's irrelevant because I could switch the order of them and then now, now we're confused again. So what I mean is calling one of them F and one of them G is a little bit easier, a little less confusing. So th there's going to be times when we do this. And the more we graph in Desmos, if you're graphing seven or eight equations at once, you definitely want to have m other names other than Y, Y equals, Y equals, Y equals, Y equals. You don't want to call everything Y. It's too confusing. Okay, so you'll name them. Okay. So back to this, that's one of the things that we do with it. The other thing is we say, okay, what if we did this? Let me copy that. Let's put this one with a uh, five in front of it. And you'll notice it's at the same location. Okay, again, we got some confusion here. We got too much stuff going on. So instead of G, I'm gonna call this H for Henry. I'm gonna click on this. So I turn that one off and now I'm just comparing G and H. And I can see that G and H are both parabolas, both go through 0, 5, but the green one is definitely skinnier. The green one is definitely skinnier. Well, why is that? Well, the green one is, has a 5 as a multiplier. So in our graph, or sorry, our table, the table would have all your x squareds multiplied by 5. And that's definitely, definitely going to make a change on it. The visual change we see is it is skinnier. Now, what happens if we turn this and make it a uh, negative 5? Well, everything that was up is now down. It's like Alice in Wonderland. What once was up is now down. Or what it wasn't, it now, or what it was, it wasn't, and what it wasn't, it now was. Something like that. Okay, anyways, it flips the whole thing upside down. So when we get into big ideas, let's try and clarify the big ideas assignment. When you get into big ideas math assignment, this is for the uh, 3.2. 
There we are, 3.2. How do you pick the right graph? Well, you don't want to just run over to Desmos. You want to play with Desmos and then get to the point where you look at this and you see, oh, it has a plus 6 there. I know that's going to shift it. Can't be this one because that's at a negative 6. Can't be this one because that one goes to 0, 0. Now, both of these look good, okay? But one of them's too skinny. So that's where we make a table of values. Instead of x and y, we use x and g of x. So what do we have here? Well, if you plugged in 0 into this equation, you'd have 0 squared plus 6, which equals 6. We already knew it went through 0, 6. That's one of our points, 0, 6. Really, what, was, what we want to do is try 2. Let's see what 2 comes out. 2 squared plus 6. Oops, sorry, 2 squared. 2 squared plus 6 would be, that's 4 plus 6 is 10. Okay. And can you see that? 2 comma 10 right there. Right, this thing is not totally accurate. This one at 2... We don't even see the graph. The, the graph's going to be way, way up there. So it's got to be this graph. Okay. So that's how you identify the right graph. A table is definitely a way to go. Okay. Uh, but the whole point of the table is you don't need to try a whole too many points. Once you try a few points, you establish the shape of the graph. All right. But now, what will they put over here? Translation. Hmm. Well, what I would call is I'd say it's a shift. Okay, so again, the original function x squared would be like, oh, no, let's get back out of that. Let's go into Desmos. The original equation would look like this. Okay, and ours was plus 6 in the book. So what it is is it shifted it up by 6, and then where we had it, we had our 210. There it is. How do you like that? But how would I describe it as a translation? Well, we forgot to use that word in our notes. How would I describe it? This point was translated up. Zero, zero got translated up. So we would say that's a vertical translation. Vertical translation. Okay. So play around with that in the book. Um, it was vertical translation six units up. So how I would describe that is vertical translation, six units up of the graph. You wouldn't usually talk like this. You'd say, Mr. Kusi, it got shifted by six. Or you might say it shifted up six. Well, shifted is the same as saying it's a vertical translation because vertical tells you the direction. Um, up six also says the same thing, but... Vertical is a little more fancy way of saying up. All right, so do the best you can. Um, and if you're not understanding this 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 fancy notation here, this f fancy x here, the f of x, uh, let me know and I'll try and help you out. Okay, send me a message or uh, meet me in tutoring, and we'll talk about it. All right. Um, and like I said, don't get stuck on this homework. If you're spending too long on each question and it's not making sense, move on. Email me. Stop. Come back to it later. All right. Have a wonderful day, you guys, and take care.